Hey, this is Frank. We're looking at a C60, C60 six speed transmission. This is um, usually paired with a 2ZZ GE engine in a Celica or a Corolla Matrix. And uh, I'm working on disassembling the transmission. I want to give you some quick tips. The first um, as you can see is the removal of the sixth gear and the uh, output shaft bearing okay and there is a special tool for doing this special service tool from Toyota you can buy it for about six hundred dollars if you can find it but instead I'm using a three jaw puller and here's a couple of hints for doing that okay if we zoom in you see that i've put a bolt through the top of the shaft and this is to support the puller screw okay and the other thing that really helps is um uh, putting the transmission into two gears at once and this prevents the shaft from rotating let me show you how you do that Looking in here, you can see the gates for selecting gears. And uh, you can reach in with a screwdriver, and I've just pushed the two front gates down. And this locked us into two gears. So once I do that, this, lo this locks this shaft. Okay, and now uh, it's tempting to use a impact to turn this because of the amount of force required. If you use an impact, these um, jaws are going to pop right off the gear. And I've already chipped the gear doing that. And that's going to cost me 200 bucks at today's prices to replace this gear. So just do this manually and if you set it up correctly you can turn this by hand and the gear will move This is a spacer that sits right here. On this side, I'm going to use this bearing puller, which is less likely to cause any damage to the gear and it fits nicely around it. But first, we're going to look at removing the snap ring. So I did not show you the removal of the snap ring on the other side, but both sides are removed the same way. First, I'm just going to orient the snap ring to where it's a little bit easier to work on it and scratch that. There's no way to orient it. It's stuck firmly in place. I take these two screwdrivers and uh, I fit them right onto the ends of the snap link. Hold them firmly together. And I'm going to take this rag, put it over the snap link so it does not go anywhere and I'm just gonna uh oh this came loose already just have to get it firmly in place just make sure it's going in the right direction
is partially off. It is just poised to fly off. So I'm going to make sure I can capture it. Get it the rest of their way off. There's our snap ring. Now these snap rings on both sides have different part numbers so make sure you keep track of which one came off which shaft and I keep them together with the other parts that come off the same shaft. So in doing this we just want to make sure that the tool clears the shaft on this side and we set it up so it just barely clears the shaft so there's no interference right here and now we can just crank away let's see how we do so this one is not as badly stuck as the other one is it's actually moving very easily and maybe having this different tool helps over having the three chop puller but as you can see this is almost off it did not take much effort at all the other side took a lot more effort so here we have our needle bearing which is a two piece should be a two piece no, it's a one piece I take that back this comes right off and then we can remove the fork and the synchro hub and then we can move on to removing fifth gear next we remove the shift fork and the synchro hub the shift fork just has a 10 millimeter bolt holding it on this side So now to remove our synchro ring, we have a little spacer, washer right here. And then underneath that we have another snap ring that we have to get off the same way with the two screwdriver method. So let's do that. So once again, I line up the two screwdrivers on the snap link. And I put a rag on the other side. And then I tap these with the hammer. I 
think we got that. There it is. Okay, so to remove this synchro hub, um, I'm using this steering wheel puller. And the synchro hub has three threaded holes in it. They are M8 by 1.25. And uh, threaded these long bolts into it. And this should just come right out. Let's see how we do with that. It's off. And this is the synchro ring. So this leaves fifth gear. Let's see how we can get this one off. You may have noticed that fifth gear has a little collar on top of it and it's perfect size for this bearing puller. Fits right on the collar. And this is our fifth gear. Now we remove the bearing retainer as one, two, three, four, five bolts. So to get these bolts off, I suggest using an impact. Here you can see the Loctite on these. Okay, so we're almost there. We just have these two bearing retainer rings right here. There's one bearing retainer ring, one bearing retainer right there. We're gonna use a uh, ring expander for these. Let's see if this tool does the job. Okay, here's one. Hope the other one does not cause as much trouble. They always put up a little bit of a fight. Here's the other one. Okay, so now there are a few more things to do on the case to remove the detents, lock balls for the forks from the size of the body and so on. But that's all pretty simple. 
and when we remove those few remaining things, the lock balls and detents, and of course the reverse shaft uh, lock bolt, then uh, this case will separate. So I'm not going to film every single little step here because there's nothing complicated here. And we'll come back after we've opened the case. Okay, so we've got it all opened up now. Okay, so I'm going to go over how we finish the disassembly of the transmission. We have the reverse idler gear that just, with this shaft, it just pulls right out, just like that. Then we have the reverse lever. It's held by these two bolts. This bolt is easy to remove. This bolt, you have to finagle a little bit, but you can get it out just by moving this lever out of the way. So this is the reverse arm. Okay, so at this point, everything should be ready to just lift right out. Let's see if we can do that. Maybe helps to get this out. Okay, well I was hoping to keep it all together. That was not meant to be, but it's easy to put it all back. Just like that, okay? pretty much completes the disassembly uh, and uh, at this point if you were doing a limited slip differential you take this open differential you would unfasten the bolts of the ring gear you transfer this ring gear to your limited slip differential you would also transfer this speedo ring. Um, although if you have an MR2 spider, you don't need this for anything, okay, because your speed signal comes from the ABS. But this gives you the option to use a vehicle speed sensor if you wanted to do that. Okay, so thanks for watching and I think that's it for this video. Uh, we'll look at reassembling this in a different video.